Hi guys, in this video lecture, we'll understand what is a pulse source. So what is a pulse source? In many circuit simulation softwares, we often have to simulate various type of sources such as a square waveform, a triangular waveform, or even a sawtooth waveform. And in order to create these different types of waveforms, we need to understand what is a pulse source and what are the parameters relating to a pulse source that we can change. And so by changing these parameters, we can create all the different kinds of waveforms that will be of use for us while doing circuit simulation. So let's begin. Let's first see what is a sample pulse waveform. So here we have an example pulse waveform and we'll use this waveform to understand all the parameters. The first parameter that we begin with is called V1 or V initial. This is the initial voltage and is usually set to zero volts. The next parameter that we deal with is called V2 or V on. So this is known as V on or also on voltage. Now you can set it to any value of your choice. In this case, just as an example, we'll set it to five volts. The next parameter that we come across is called TR or the rise time. Now, the rise time is the amount of time it takes a waveform to go from its 0% voltage value, which is 0 volts in our case, to its 100% voltage value, which is 5 volts in our case. Now, you may have read that the rise time is measured from 10% to 90% of the voltage value. Now, that is true, but in this case, note that we are not measuring the rise time, we are setting the rise time. Since we are setting the rise time, we are considering the value over the entire swing from 0% to 100%. Next, we see the fall time, Tf. Again, the fall time is the complement of the rise time. So the fall time is the amount of time the waveform takes for the voltage to fall from its 100% voltage value to its voltage value. Again, since we are not measuring the fall time, but we are setting it, I will be considering the entire swing from 100% to 0%. Next, let's understand what is the parameter called as on time. So the on time is the time for which the waveform maintains the voltage level V2. That is in our case, it's five volts. So it is this amount of time that we call as on time or you could say the flat portion of the waveform, which is at voltage level V2. The complement of that parameter is the off time, which is the amount of time for which the waveform maintains its lowest voltage level, which is V1. So the flat portion of the waveform at voltage level V1. Finally, let's talk about the parameter period. So all pulse waveforms are periodic in nature. That is, they repeat themselves at regular intervals of time. This, this entire duration is called the period of the waveform. So as you can see, from this point onwards to this point is the period of the waveform. And after this point, the waveform repeats itself at regular intervals. These intervals are called as periods. One interval is one period of the waveform. Now, the last parameter that we need to understand is called TD or delay time. So delay time is the offset from the origin. Now, so the delay time is the offset from the zero time at which the waveform starts. Now, now looking at the waveform, we can see that the period of the waveform is the sum 
of TR, the rise time, plus T on, the on time, plus TF, the fall time, and finally T off, the off time. Now in most cases, you will never get to set the off time directly. So how we go about it is we set the rise time, the on time, the fall time, and finally we set the period. And this automatically sets the off time. We'll understand that in a bit with actual values. Let's go over all our configuration parameters once again for the sake of revision. I'll draw a waveform here. I'll draw a general pulse waveform. Form. The first parameter is the rise time, TR. For as an example, we can set that to 10 milliseconds. Again, this is just an example. You can set it to any value you want. We'll go with 10 milliseconds. The next parameter is the fall time, TF. We can set the fall time again as 10 milliseconds. Next is the on time. The on time we will set it as 40 milliseconds. Finally, we'll also set the period of the waveform, the period as 100 milliseconds, for example. This voltage value here is as we saw V1, which is usually zero volts, and voltage value V2 can be anything, but we'll go with five volts in this example. Let's write that down here. V1 is zero volts for us. Lastly, let's also take an example for the delay time. The delay time is marked here. And as an example, we'll take that as 10 milliseconds. So I want to show you how the off time gets calculated by setting the period, the TR, the T on and the fall time. So the calculation is this of the rise time, fall time, on time and the off time. So I can say that the off time is equal to the period and minus the sum of rise, fall, and on time. Now if you plug in our values here, the period is 100 milliseconds, rise time is 10, fall time is 10, and the off time is set to 40. So that should give us 10 plus 10, 20 plus 40, 60, 100 minus 60, we are looking at an off time of 40 milliseconds. So that's an off time of 40 milliseconds. So you see by setting the period is the only way how we can indirectly set the off time of our waveform. I hope the this form, is clear. Now let's move on. Now that we've understood the various parameters relating to now that we've understood the various parameters relating to a pulse waveform, let's see how we can generate a square waveform from a pulse waveform. Now square waveform comes in handy when you're dealing with digital systems because it has two states, only zero and one. So let's first draw a general waveform here. I'll mark the parameters, TR, T on, T off, T, the fall time and T off. Now, if you look at a square waveform closely, you'll see that a square waveform can be said to be a waveform with it, which has a very minute or very less rise time 
and for time you can say this value is negligible as compared to the on time of the waveform or the on time is much much greater than the rise time and the fall time so by taking a rise time and a fall time let's say for example of one nanosecond and an on time of a value that's way greater than one nanosecond let's take for example 10 milliseconds i should be able to arrive at what is called a square waveform so so you can use you can use different values to generate your square waveform but what you have to ensure is that to create a square waveform from a pulse waveform the rise time and the fall time that you set has to be very small than the on time i hope that is clear now you might ask can we set the rise time and the fall time to 0 nanosecond that should give us a perfect square waveform but it has to be understood the setting of 0 nanoseconds for a rise time and fall time is not a practical scenario we don't advise that in all simulation softwares you'll have to go for the minimum value which could be 1 nanosecond in some softwares or other but you should never go for 0 nanoseconds because that is not a practically advisable setting Finally, let's see another example of how you can generate a triangular waveform from a general pulse waveform. I'll draw the general pulse waveform again here to the right. T on, T f and T off. Now, if you look closely at a triangular waveform, you'll see that I can define a triangular waveform as a waveform that has some finite rise time, a finite fall time, and again you'll see a rise time here. So that tells us that the on time is zero and also the off time is zero. So I have a T on of zero and a t of of 0. So to generate a triangular waveform from a pulse waveform I know I have to set t on as 0 and I have to achieve a t off as 0. Now let's consider some example values for the rise time and the fall time. time. Let's set that as 10 milliseconds. Now since we can't set the off time directly We'll have to set the period of the waveform and in this case I'll have to set the period as 20 millisecond so only then through back calculation I can see that the off time would automatically become zero because the sum of on time, off time, rise time and fall time has to be equal to period. So by going for a zero value for on and off time and using some finite value for rise time and fall time as you saw, we can generate a triangular waveform from a general pulse waveform. Now, these are just a few examples of the waveforms that you can generate by setting various values for various parameters of a pulse waveform. Some other examples could be the sawtooth waveform, or you could even try to generate a square waveform with different, du different duty cycles. Again, these are just some of the waveforms that can be generated by assigning different values to the parameters of a general pulse waveform. So in this lecture, we saw what is a pulse waveform. We understood various parameters relating to a pulse waveform. We saw how these parameters affect each other and the calculations for the same. And finally, we also saw how you could assign different values to these parameters and create some commonly used waveforms like the square waveform, or the triangular waveform. Thank you.